They had to replace my basin. It <laughs> fell apart. Wait a minute. So my landlord doesn't know from coordination. She knows from cheap. <laughs> so she put in a white basin that belonged in a hospital room. And it, it threw off the whole color scheme of the bathroom, Eric. Yeah. And I'm going crazy. I could go I couldn't go into the bathroom and, and not so cringe when I Show saw me. the white basin. Yeah. So I decided I made a little cover for it. A little look, a, a dressing gown. For the sink. You are too much. Isn't that a cute idea? See, it was all white. It's incredible. I had an old shower curtain I just cut up. I like your bathroom. It's a girl. It's a girl. Well, it is a girl, yeah. All right? Oh, I did, you know what? I didn't see that typewriter cover. Well, it's not really a cover. What What do you call it? Right. It's a masterpiece. Eric, how do you like that? I made that. Of course you did. <laughs> I could tell. Well, Irene. They have so many fights in these condos. Everyone's yeah. a boss. These people have nothing to do, so they pick and pick. Uh -huh. they've, take, they've taken their neighbors to court every other day. Really? They allow, they allow certain animals at a certain weight. Mm -hmm. In one condo, the animal gained five pounds. Uh huh. So the, all the tenants raised an uproar. They wanted the dog to go on a diet. <laughs> Where was this? Where did well, you hear about? ended up in court. Really? Then another woman had a mezuzah on her door. Yeah. And they objected. In Miami Beach? Now, let me tell you something about a condo. It is not your home, because everyone living in that condo has to approve if you put a flower pot on the window. I know. Who wants that? Could you not imagine me. they might, if you lived in a condo, they might tell you where you could put your hats. Uh, no, don't that drive me crazy. Yeah. They would, they would be at my door every five minutes asking me what to do with this and what to do with that. I, I know my people. Uh, yeah. What's the story? You went to the laundromat. I went to the laundromat. Before I went to the laundromat, I went home and made myself comfortable. Put on a little robe, took off uh -huh. my hat, and I took my little shopping cart and went to the market. And when I got to the supermarket, uh, laundromat, People who knew me looked at me and said, what happened to you? I felt so awful, you have no idea. I thought, my God, is it, is it that much of a contrast? Obviously it was. Never went back to the laundromat again just that way. Always fully clothed with the hat, the shoes, the bag, all matching. It's true. <laughs> Never went back again. Comfortable. In other words, I just took the hat off, took the clothes off, put a little robe on. But they looked at me and said, my God, what happened to you? They didn't recognize you. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Listen, and you can turn this up. I, oh, I saw Gloria Estefan on Lincoln Road. Yeah. Didn't recognize her. She looked like, well, I don't, how can I just, so ordinary. And she really is a superstar, right? The way she was dressed, mm -hmm. her hair. And there was nothing about her that was attractive. She was walking with her husband. Somebody called my attention to her. I said, that's Gloria? I said, she's so beautiful. She looks great. Most of these movie stars, I used to work in hotels in a showroom. Uh -huh. And uh, during the day, they look like slobs, like char women, mm -hmm. char men, whatever. And at night, beautiful. But wouldn't you think that they, they create an image when they're on the stage and they would uphold that image? But they don't. Haven't you seen it? Sometimes they just need a break from the image, too. No, doesn't, of, that isn't a break, Eric. Doesn't it feel good to take it all off sometimes? No, no, no. I only feel good when I get dressed. No. Do you no. wear hats to bed? No, no. <laughs> that, that's a little crazy. I, I may be nuts, but not that nuts. No, 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 no. I uh, sometimes I even take the hat off during the day. Yeah. I did, had it off this all afternoon today. Oh, really? Yeah. It's just that I'm so used to seeing the hats with the outfit. I don't like the outfit without the hats. Of course not. I really don't. Take a picture of the shoes. Got it. Okay, Irene? Yeah. Here we are at Morrison's. Morrison's. And we were going in for a delicious lunch.
89 cents for a side dish, that's cheap. All right, bon appetit. Thank you. For one time I worked as a uh, room service operator in a hotel. You know, the hotel is no longer here. And it was around New Year, and there's a room service captain. So I said, you know, it might give you a cute idea. I said, if I buy these little tiny, tiny dolls, tiny baby dolls, and type a little strip, the Happy New Year, and put it on the doll like a diaper. And when they order their breakfast or lunch, put a little Happy New Year doll on the tray. He said, great idea, Irene, do it. I did it. He made a fortune in chips. He gave me zilch. Didn't even give me the money for the dolls. That's terrible. Terrible. I said to my, I said to him, I said, you know, you don't deserve all the money that you got in chips for my idea. I said, where's, I said, where's my? Th you didn't even say thank you. I said, forget the thank you. I said, you didn't even pay for the dolls. And he laughed and walked away. So you get smart each time. Each time somebody takes advantage of you, you get smarter the next time, the next time. And finally, it came to a head with my last job, where he's giving me somebody else's work to do. And she worked on it for two weeks. She couldn't get it right. I said, this is it. Monday morning, 10 o'clock. Get a cotton, packed up all my personal stuff, and walk. Before I walked, I went in and said goodbye to him. He said, where are you going? I said, I forewarned you. I told you I'd work for you like a trooper, but don't ever take advantage of me. Because it had been building up. I had a lot of terrible, terrible, terrible. So was that the last time you worked for anyone? Yeah. And you know, all these terrible jobs, really, they weren't so terrible to stop and think about it. Because it gave me the impetus to uh, be my, my own boss. Yeah, and not to be afraid of people. If they're wrong, you tell them off. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's it. But I got my satisfaction when I had a call about my withholding slip. You know what he said to me? You see, the biggest mistake I ever made in my life was letting you walk out. They filed for bankruptcy a year later. <laughs> and I take all the credit for that. Oh, is this the one that you were in when I was here? This is the one with my picture in it. Lincoln Road Rules. Hey. Look. There you are. I had no idea that they had it and they were going to print it. They told me it. Uh, and look, Dalia. they have your name in there too. Yeah, I don't. So what happened? A photographer. When I was walking down, walking home, photographer commented on the outfit, and he said, "Can I take a picture?" I said, "Okay." So he took the picture. What they're doing, these are roving photographers. Yeah. They take pictures and they sell them to the magazine. He made money out of it. They, all these photographers have made money out of, my, out of my pictures. So did you write them a letter? I called them and they hung up on me. Oh. Before this was printed in Ocean Drive, I said, well, I'll consider myself my 15 minutes of, uh, of um, fame. Of fame when, they, when I'm in Ocean Drive. I swear I said that to myself. And then when uh, Leonardo said to me, I saw your picture in Ocean Drive, I almost fainted. I said, where, where, where? So he said, in this, in the March issue. So I went, I went around crazy looking for it, and I couldn't find it, a copy of it. Uh -huh. So I'm in the laundromat that Sunday. Did I tell you this? No. I'm in the laundromat that Sunday, and there was a nice looking fellow there. And oh, he came over to me, and he said, hey, I saw your picture in Ocean Drive. I said, how do you like that? Everybody saw it. I didn't see it because I couldn't get a copy of it. He said, well, you know, in Alton Roll, there's a newsstand there. I think you can get it. I said, okay, thanks. I'll go when I finish my laundry. So while I'm doing my laundry, he went out and he came back. And what do you think he did? He went to the newsstand and he brought me two copies with my picture. See, Irene, there are nice people out yeah, there that, so you know. There's so few and far between, though. Well, you know. I got so excited, I kissed him on the cheek. <laughs> and a uh, nice fellow. He has a little store on Alton Road. Oh. Yeah, uh, furnishings, lamps, uh, chairs, you know. How nice. Paraphernalia, stuff for the home. Mm -hmm. And uh, he brought me two magazines.